<laughs> Hello, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Oh man. I was going to knock that off. Bit of transformer hum in the uh, in the Supro there. Yeah, uh, if we'd have practiced that for another 25 minutes, I think there'd have been some meaningful music there. That was great. It was nice. Fun. I, was, I was just getting into it by about bar 76. <laughs> <laughs> so, big news, Dan. Yeah, well, news. It's it's my new pedal board. Awesome. How yeah, long has yeah. this been in the making? Um, wow. Yeah, a long time. A couple so, of years. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> totally. Uh, so this is the culmination of, of basically everything that we've learned. Um, and, you know, new G3, all the stuff that we've been trying out. Um, yeah, this is my rig for now. <laughs> Will it fall to pieces if I pick the lid up? No, no, not at all. <laughs> It's like what you got under there. Oh, that's what you're finding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, there's some context here. Yes. You're starting to make music again, aren't you? Yeah. So, my band Tin Spirits ended uh, a couple of years ago now. I can't believe a couple of years been that long. Anyway, I'm going to have another crack at it. Um, with a new band. Getting the band back together. Getting get the band back together. Um, Have you got to break any of them out of jail? No. Or at least go and get them as they're released. No, I, no. Uh, but I, I can't speak for Doug. Right. You know, he's that, that type <laughs> yeah. that might, might well end up there. Uh, but yeah, so it's going to be Doug, Mark, myself with Paul Stacey. No way. Yeah, man. I think we should honk everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So really excited about it. And what I wanted to do, I mean, this is, I've put this together as a starting point so we can start to jam and, and write and just see what happens. Um, I'm really keen to get a lot of textures going. Yep. And, you know, some experimental things and, but at the core of it, have a really, just a really great guitar sound. Um, yeah, so this is the result. Awesome. Shall we roll VT? Roll VT. With a big pedal board like this, planning is everything. Uh, making sure that you really understand your signal path, making sure that all the bases are covered with your pedal choices, your power supply, your MIDI stuff. Uh, I use an app called Graphio. It just helps me lay things out so I can see visually exactly what's going on. It's really handy. But let's start with the gain stages. I've got the Kingsley Peasant and Page, the Analog Man King of Tone, uh, the Zenith Compressor from Hampstead, the Dirty Mac Treble Booster from Pig Dog London, and the Chase Bliss Automaton Mark II Preamp. Then for modulation, I've got the Harmonious Monk from Jam and the Thorpey Camouflage. Uh, then we get into Delay and Reverb with the CXM 1978 from Chase Bliss and the Free the Tone Future Factory. And then the Eventide H9 and the Microcosm from Hologram give me all my weird noises. So I'm using my trusty old Schmidt Array pedal board. Uh, it's a twin tier board, which means I can have pedals on the top and pedals underneath. Uh, it's a really great size. It'll get all my big pedals on, um, but it still keeps things as compact as possible. Okay, so I put a little bit of pedal board tape on the corner of each pedal and then that connects to the loop Velcro. So it keeps everything in place, um, but you know it's not impossible to pull out when I need to you know, readjust things. So then we start doing the layout. I put the complicated pedals on the top, um, pedals I need to get to, any foot switches I need to get to. Um, so exact, you know, if I want to do anything with tap tempo on the free the tone, I use the uh, looper in the microcosm. So I want to get to those foot switches. And of course I want to be able to see the tuner. And uh, the Harmonious Monk is very pretty, so I put, put that at the top. So the pedals on the bottom tier, I try and arrange them um, in the most logical signal path as possible. Um, in this case, the Dirty Mac is in loop one, the Peasant is in loop two, and so forth and so on. It is a bit of a you know, pedal board Jenga, getting everything to fit in properly, but you know, I try to get that um, the signal path as obvious as I can. Now I can change the signal path in G3, but it just helps. So now I'm just checking to make sure that everything fits nicely. So it's time to start looking at the power supply. I'll be using the uh, Gig Rig modular power supply system. Um, no great surprises there. Um, 
so you know this is just a matter of getting things laid out you can see i've got quite a lot of um high current pedals on the top shelf so just uh, having all the correct high current adapters for those and then just using um, you know an isolator for the lower current pedals on the bottom uh, shelf one thing i do with the power supply and, and with the cables and actually with the audio cables as well i will use cable ties um, so you can see here i'm putting a cable tie on the back and now one of the things is i need to keep the cables away from the brackets on of the pedal board those brackets when the lid comes down those brackets are really strong and they can um, snip things so i want to keep those cables together and away from those brackets but you'll see i'm actually leaving the cable ties i don't do them up until the very end in case there's anything else i need to change it's now time to test so uh, plug in the iec connector in the back and just check that all the lights come on um, which they do and then i'm just going to lift up the lid and just double check all the pedals underneath uh, the dirty mac is a is is a battery only but everything else powers up lovely okay so time to start doing the audio uh, i'll be using the evidence audio sis um, solderless system i've been using this system for years and it's fantastic i've also got a bunch of these cables already made up so you know i'll just be reusing these i have recently bought a whole bunch of the square plug things so i'll be um, doing some tests with those, um, but I've always really liked the monorail patch cable. Uh, so you can see here again, I'm putting a cable tie on the uh, patch cables that are going to the pedals on the top tier. And that just helps keep that together um, and just keeping everything neat and tidy. So once that's together again, I'm just checking that everything fits and that nothing's getting caught and checking that all the um, patch cables are in properly. And once that's done, it's time to start putting the MIDI uh, cables together. So I've got five pedals on this board that are gonna be using MIDI. And I'm just basically taking the MIDI out from G3 and then uh, going to the MIDI in and through of those pedals and connecting them all together. Right, so there it is. That is the board all put together. Time to start making some noise. Wow, mate, that was fascinating. Yeah, it's fun. I, th I think it I didn't take as long. I haven't seen it yet. I, it didn't take as long as I, as I the, the actual building of the board was the simple bit. Yeah, that's not the, where the effort goes. No, it? it's, all the, it's all the sort of intent behind it. And then, you know, there's so much to learn that like the microcosm, the H9, through the tone, this, and the, and the Chase Bliss stuff. There's so much tech on there. Yeah. And so getting around that stuff, you know, loads and loads of fun, but it, it is time consuming. Building a board like this is a big commitment because to get the most out of it, you've really got to understand what's going on. I think that is definitely the case when you're choosing these kinds of multi-function, yeah, 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 interdependent sort of sounds. Like yeah. if you if your board is, I don't know, three gain stages, a reverb and a delay, it's much easier to just swap things in and sure. out. You can go, I don't yeah, yeah, like yeah. that overdrive today i'm going to change it for a different one whereas here the interdependency the midi control i'm assuming there's midi control oh, oh yeah <laughs> um it, it, it is much more its own ecosystem now sure rather than a bunch of component parts yeah too cool um okay can we can we just start with basic gain staging yeah totally. can i just hear your basic gain stages sure now you've, you've chosen the matchless i thoroughly expected to see but Super Reverb. I have been infatuated with that amp since we played it last time. Yeah. And I've wanted to see how it will pair with the Matchless. N not sure. Yeah. Not sure yet. I think we've discovered the Achilles heel. Well, two Achilles heels already. Right. One being... It's really loud. It's got... Well, it, it, the place <laughs> where you loved it was, it was, it, was so on loud. seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's on two. Yeah. So it's a different response. It really is. And the other one is uh, we were having some issues phasing. Uh, neither phase option sounded bang on. So mm -hmm. we assume that might be something to do with 10s and 12s. And I've but... always had that. Whenever I've matched 10 and 12 inch speakers, I've found it really difficult to yeah. work out where, you know, what's in phase and what's not. Yeah. And because they were a different response, the 10s. Um, I, I really like that sound. So I used to run the AC30 and my AC10 twin together. Mm. And it was magic. And then I had an AC50 and the AC10 together. 
and it was just so rock and roll. <laughs> so I, I do like that. Um, there's something about the 10-inch speakers that I'm infatuated with. What I'm going to try is I've been using this hook head for a while, which I really like. Um, there it is. Back there behind me. I'm going to get it. So you can see it. I'm going to get a three by ten cab made for that, and give that a go. And that's sort of black facey slash dumbly, but it sounds great at lower volumes as well. So right. I'm going to give that a go. Um, but yeah, for today, I just wanted to. For today, the super. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Do you ever not have a pedal on? W bit, bit windy today. So yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> the. <laughs> So the, um, right, do I ever not have a pedal on? A actually, no. I, th at the very least, uh, for my for my straight ahead clean tone, uh, which is this. And that's the peasant. So you can click the peasant on and off and you see what it does. A little bit of valve compression and chime and it's, oh, I just love it. A bit more. This is really interesting. So it's a, it's a, what, a single stage valve boost yep. with that input impedance control. Yes. Does that have a noticeable Im impact on the tone or is it to do with what comes after it? Uh, I, I love the character of that as a pre-boost when you just want a little bit more sizzle, Yeah. but you don't want to slam it like like a, we'll show you in a minute with the treble booster. Before we move on, can you yes. just do two things for me? Yes. Can you play at full volume and then uh, reduce your guitar volume to about seven or eight for yep. a sec? Yep. And, and then we'll continue to do that. Okay. Fascinating. It is. It totally is. It's a magic thing. Um, so where it says input Z, if you can read that on pedal cam there, that's the input impedance and it's monkeying with that, which as you heard, has a significant effect on the response of the guitar to that first valve stage. But then I'm also guessing it's going to have a significant effect downstream. And yeah. you're about to talk about treble boosters. Yeah, so that's I mean so that's not always on, but it is the basis of, you know, lots of clean tones. So the way I've set the rig up is the first four are different levels of gain. Okay, so that's the clean one. Then number two, that kicks on the king of tone. Since we did the show with it, I would just I was reminded just how amazing that thing is. So I've got it. I've got it on there for now, um, and then I've got two different gain stages with the Chase Bliss. So, <laughs> so I'm sending out MIDI presets now, um, specifically on the channel for the Automatone. If that is confusing to you at this point, um, we did a video, first video of this year, called "Can Mick Do MIDI." Um, which explains how that process works in relation to something like the, the Automatone series. So if you're confused about how the MIDI switching uh, works, watch that show. It was the first one we did in 2021, and it will fill in the gaps for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is just a bit more gain than the King of Tone, a bit fatter. <laughs> And then... Yeah. 
you know, like a higher, uh, higher gain thing. It's not, um, that sound is more, it's not a natural gainy sound. It's meant to be a, like a texturally yeah, angry thing. Yeah, you're not thing. playing a solo with that no, sound, are you? No, you're, It's something that sits in. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then what I've done, I've got my page boost. So under all the gain foot switches, each foot switch has a second uh, function. So, so there's back to the king of tone. If I hit the foot switch again, it adds in the paid. And again, I go to the, um, the first drive page. So I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, yeah. So you can have a, a secondary function for each foot switch. Um, How do you know which is which? So the first one this is King of Tone, and then yeah. the hidden preset, little H, comes up on the okay. top left hand side. Yeah. And you can, you know, that's just a different preset. At the moment, I'm just adding the boost on top of that. So is that sorry, is that standard in, in G3 and G3 Atom? Yeah. So as it comes out the box, if you hit the switch twice. No, no, you just program it. You, you have to tell it to do yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. can do that, you know, per foot switch. So I've got presets here that don't do it. I've got some presets that do do it. It's really windy. The wind gods are angry at Dan's pedal choices. <laughs> Um, so, so that's, you know, that's the basic gain staging. I've then got, so um, does that mean you've got eight gain stages then? So no, I've got the peasant, I've got the king of tone, I've got, uh, I get to the compressor, I've got a compressor, which we'll get to in a second. I've got travel booster, I've got the automaton, uh, and the page. So I think there's that six, I think I've got six. But because you've put some of those hidden presets in, yeah. you've got that and that, that, that and that, that, that and that. Yeah. That, so I'm only that, using that. the page as a boost. Yeah. Right? So it makes sense to just have the page as a boost underneath the presets. Yep. You know, because if, if I'm adding delay and reverb and then I just need a kick and boost, just hit the foot switch again. And in the case of the King of Tone, for example, is the page before or after? It's after. After. Yeah. The page, it's, I can move that. Yeah, uh, in G three, but I've just put it at the end of everything because I just I I love the way the page just warms everything up. Um, we we'll just save Simon doing another cutout. Uh, there's the page. There's the page there. Kingsley Page Tube Boost, not to be confused with the Kingsley Page DS, which is a different thing. Yeah. And I mean I've been using that for years, and I just it's, it's wonderful. So that's the the those basic sounds but then i will have sounds where i kick the treble booster in now the um the dirty mac from pig dog i've i've gone through i like all the treble boosters i've got and the number is substantial and they're all great but this thing there's something about this i just love no there's no led there's no power in it's battery only um but you know how normally with treble boosters you hear it until clean air but it's like horrific this doesn't do that there's something it, it drives in a different way it just sounds magic so i've got that under a uh, one of these um stomp box presets so if i go to um let's say yes yeah, stand the king of tone for a minute and then i have the king of tone into the page now if i hit that with the troll booster and I'll go to another gain stage here, which is the slightly dirtier one from the Chase Bliss. Yeah. <laughs> Punk band. Yeah, totally. But if I, so the, so yeah, that's basically the game stages. I then have the, um, the I've got a compressor just for a clean sound. I, I wouldn't use it for anything else because um, the, the valves and the, are doing all the lovely compression. Is that that? That's that. So the Zenith is 
It's a compressor, but with EQ. Right. Then you can have the EQ pre or post compression, or you can have it in parallel. That makes so much sense. It's so clever. I like the I like the effect of compression. I almost always dislike the EQ of it. Yeah. And it's got, you know, different Switches. cues, different cues and frequency things for the mid point. Okay, it's so you... seriously, seriously clever. It uses a, a VCA voltage controlled amplifier to do the compression and it's 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 just lovely. So this is the peasant going into the compressor, going into reverb. <laughs> Now, if you hit five again, so I've got that page boost on top of the clean sound. If I was a farmer now, I would shoot you with my shotgun for worrying my preamps. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, obviously this is brand new and I'm still working the levels out. What um, happened, sorry, when I switched on five again, what did you do, switch to another boost? I switched the page boost on after it. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, what is, what is immediately apparent here is you've got almost endless shades of rock of yeah of gain how on earth do you remember well it's really simple i mean i just have you know there's four different levels of gain for for this bank i've got those four different levels of gain <laughs> and then the sparkly clean thing and then under each level of gain i've got the boost um but for, as far as like jamming the sounds are all there. I can get to those really quickly. Yeah. Now, when it comes to, you know, once we've got songs and we want to record, right. I'll then be able to program specific sounds for each part. Yep. Um, but to get me going, this starts me off in a good spot, I think. Um, yeah. Nice. Let's go at the other end then. Okay. So typically your gains come first. At the other end, presumably you've got reverb and delay. Yeah, so I've got, there's only one stereo effect I've got plugged in here at the moment, which is the reverb. Yep. And everything else is running wet dry or wet, wet or however you want to call it. I'm sending different things to different app to the amplifiers. So no, no doubt you will have seen it already, but let's put the diagram up then of the signal path. Indeed, indeed. So the great thing about this is that I can change I can change this at will. Um, I can have, um, in one preset, I can have things going to both amplifiers. In one preset, I can change where that goes to. Um, but if we just have a listen to the uh, a reverb sound to start with, so I get my, just the, the peasant again. If you can hit 12 for us. Um, 12.
Oh, man. Very, very, very nice. So that's a whole reverb with, with a bit of um, uh, pre-delay? Yeah, a tiny bit of pre-delay. I haven't gone hi-fi with it. It's a bit little, so it's just like the standard yeah. um, uh, clock. And that's it. Just got the, the crossover point where I want it, the bass and mids. It's really lovely. But then if I go to 13, I get this. So now if we combine that reverb sound with that slightly heavier drive Sorry, it's just so good. There's something about those short, roomy type reverbs it, that are fabulous. It just makes it really it, fabulous. Yeah. So, you know, I've just picked a couple of, you know, one big reverb, one small reverb, yeah. just just so I can kick them in yeah. when, I, when I'm, you know, making stuff up. Yeah. And of course, the, the, the beauty of the CXM, A, we've said many times on this show, it just sounds spectacular. B, if you do want to make a quick change, it's all WYSIWYG. Yeah. So there's no yeah, menus yeah. and you can do that. Well, there are secondary functions, but it's predominantly WYSIWYG in terms of, you know, your reverb tail, the type, the um, length, the depth, the pre-delay and all that. You can see exactly where you are at yeah. any time, you know. And delay then. So Dan's delay, there'll be lots of timeline users feeling somewhat crestfallen at this point given that you used a timeline for years and then... So I used a timeline for years and it was it was wonderful. And it was lots of sounds I had in that which were recorded with Spirits albums. Yeah. Couldn't use anything else because it, they were in... So specific. Of, so specific. And it was fantastic. I am doing less with delays now. Um, so for the time being, I've got two delays. I've got the Free the Time Future Factory, and I've got my Echo Fix tape delay, and they're going left and right. So if I go back to the clean sound, So the echo fix is coming out of the um, super and the free the tone is coming out of the matchless. Let's just hear that. So this is the this is the echo fix. Turn that one down. Hold on. I think I know the answer, but why don't you just do everything out of the free the tone? Um, it, it's got um, completely separate stereo lines, so you can you can do. That. Yeah, I th I think I uh, I love this thing, and there'll be times when I just want a tape delay in one app. Yeah, and times when I want um, a specific thing, but uh, I just I'm loving having tape on one side, yeah, digital yeah. on the other. It just, yeah, it was really... And do you ever use it with more than one head? Uh, not really. I love that it's just the single heads, it sounds so good. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I didn't have reverb, I would. Yeah. Because it that gives you that lush, almost reverb type thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't really need to. So if I combine that 
bouncy thing with the big sounding reverb. It's just magic. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely it's, magic. It's, good. it's lost for days, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Those textures. And if I combine the, the delay with the that uh, compression sound, yep. you get... I, I those sorts of textures are big textures I just they just get me I they're the kind of them. sounds as well that you don't need loads of volume for like no you, you you may well argue that your sort of core rock tone um does benefit from being a bit loud but actually those textures with delays and reverbs and compression they uh, can sound massive at really low volumes absolutely in fact that was really low volume I'm, I'll have to boost that quite a bit to get it in your ears but um just even though it was really quiet, I don't know what the dB meter was saying, under 80 probably, or wow, really? 85, okay. 85 for the peaks maybe. Okay. Um, so it's very quiet compared to what we play, and yet the sound is massive. Yeah, yeah, totally. Really cool. And um, the last, the, so the last part of the puzzle for the big stuff is the microcosm. So I've got the microcosm. I'm actually coming out of output one, going into the microcosm, and then out into... The matchless. The reason being, because I'm controlling that via MIDI, right? So I can, I can, you know, do all the MIDI, you know, all the MIDI control stuff. But what I can also do is, no matter what sound I'm on, I can then loop it and just send some stuff to an amplifier. So let's go back to that. So it's, oh man, I just does, love that thing so much. It requires quite a specific environment, doesn't it, to be able to really explore that kind of thing. So yeah. th those of us who do predominantly uncreative cover gigs playing simply the best and then <laughs> Black Velvet. It's simply the best. <laughs> uh, you know, 
that kind of thing is t certainly, you know, potentially usable in that situation, but not really. Sure. And yet, but you're not talking about that. You're no. talking about your writing, you're yeah. doing specific parts, you've got a band that is into exploring these textures. And, Absolutely. And I, I hope before too much longer, we get to see some of that in context. Because it, it doesn't really, if you're new to this kind of stuff, it doesn't make sense until you hear it in context. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's a slightly different thing. One of the things I enjoyed greatly was, um, I don't know if it was this tour or the last tour, when Joey came over and he got into the Chase Bliss mood, I yes. think it was. Yeah, yeah. And so, you'd, you'd, you know, he'd be singing a song or whatever. This is uh, Joey Landreth, by the way. And plenty of people do this. You'd, you'd finish the song... And then as you finish the song, you set up a little micro loop thing and it becomes a texture in between something of interest, almost like an amuse-bouche in a, in a meal. You know, it's like a, it's a break between one, th Absolutely, one thing man. and the next. That between songs. Yeah. You know? Ah, uh, yeah. And, and that, clearly that's not its only use, but I, I'm just trying to pick it out because there, there probably are more traditionalists watching who are like, well, how do you blooming use that? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think... If you listen really carefully to a lot of um, more recent music, you'll hear that stuff everywhere. Yeah, totally. It, it might be a drum loop, it might be a keys loop, it might be a whatever, but that kind of granular looping thing has really become a thing. Absolutely. And and for me, the microcosm, I mean, Hologram have been just awesome at this from day one. The yeah. microcosm is, it's like the greatest hits of all the granular looping stuff all put into one pedal. It's yeah. it's astonishing. And by granular loop, what do we mean? We mean you don't just record a four bar phrase and then play over it. No, no. So it so it takes that loop and then it chops it up and then reassembles it in in you know in sort of random orders and, and plays it back. Um Yeah, so it's really not your I'm gonna play my rhythm part yeah, yeah. and then I'm gonna play my lead part over the top. It's not I mean, presumably you could do something like yeah, that. Yeah, so but... it has the phrase looper built in as well. Yeah. So it can do all that stuff, but then it does all the stuff with the that granular stuff. And then you manipulate right. it in terms of frequency spectrum. Yeah, and... man. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's 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 a marvel. I've 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 haven't had so much fun with a pedal in years. Yeah. And it's the sort of thing you can just get lost with. It's just been absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, massive fan of that. So that sort of as far as the, you know, creating textures and with the reverb and, and the tape and stereo delay and the microcosm, we've got a lot of things to work with. Yeah, um, my, my head is exploding. Sure. One, so one thing um, that I've got a lot of questions about is the H9 being on the board. I'm ignoring it, so I didn't want to, even want to ask about it. <laughs> so it's really interesting. I see Don't freak these, out, don't freak out. It's I, just a joke, all right? It's but, just, just a joke. So I see these pop up all the time, and on, especially on session players' boards, because they are like a Swiss army knife. If there's an effect that you yeah. don't have that you need for a, a recording, yeah, you get your app, go through it, and it's there. What I use it for is for the really out there stuff and for harmonies and things. So, for example, I've got it set up. One of the things in, in the H9 that I've never been a fan of, because there's no analog drive through, but what I can do in G3, if I'm using one amplifier, I can split the loop and have the dry signal go around the outside. I've got kill dry hooked up in the H9. So I get my analog dry through, and then I can just have the, the H9 stuff on top. So you're using G3 to create the analog dry through. Exactly. Um, in If you don't have access to something like G3, you could use uh, one of Dan's other products, the Wetterbox, to do that. Could you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but the point is, you can take the dry sound away, yep. so that you don't get the phasing issue when you have it into two amps. Exactly. Yeah. What, how I'm using this with the harmonizer is I've split it. I've got my dry signal coming out of the matchless, and the harmonized sounds coming out of the Fender. So, if I, it's time for ballerina. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> so, and what 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 I really love about that is my dry sound is yeah. unaffected. Yep, yep. You yep. know, and so it still has clarity and stuff. And so the sound engineer can go on the on the amp on the fader from that amp. <laughs> yes. So I'm the only person <laughs> hearing it. Yeah, it's great. Actually, on, on a serious note, when um, when Dan was uh, putting all this together yesterday and he was testing that out. Um, we just had a little chat about the fact that if you've ever used any of those pitch shifted sounds, especially lower octaves, yeah. but it also relates um, strongly to synth sounds as well, because obviously the frequency spectrum is so different. It's, it takes a while to understand how loud and quiet those sounds need to be in Absolutely. your mix. Yeah. And I'm guessing because you've got that wet dry relationship it's a little bit easier it's, in that respect because the dry absolutely, sounds absolutely because the dry yeah. sounds always there so I, it's less imperative to get the i mean it's still important but less yeah. imperative to get that exactly right because the dry sounds always going to pop out in front yeah you know and it's can, great can, can you do a really bad version of the killing in the name of solo uh it doesn't matter if you don't know what the notes are let's see let's see um Win. Dan wins the internet today. <laughs> that was for you, Tom Morello. So the other the other bit of I've got another harmony thing set up here, and all it is is a um, it's just a preset that goes between a minor harmony and a major harmony. So Dan, Dan had a guitar lesson with Mike Stern. Oh my week. god! Oh my god! And uh, if you don't know Mike Stern, look him up. <laughs> my first question was, did he teach you saddy and happy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. Yeah. So if I'm doing, um, here we go. I'll do. Uh, if I'm doing like whole tone stuff, I go happy. Or diminish stuff, I'll go sad. <laughs> or just follow the scale. That's the most useful application I've ever heard for a harmony pedal, apart from if it's Brian May. Um, what a great lesson in major scale yeah, intervals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you didn't follow that, if you know the intervals of the major scale, you'll know that some. if you play out the full chords of the major scale, some are minor and some are major, right? Mm -hmm. What Dan was doing is he was putting in the minors and the majors with the harmony. And you got everyone right, which... <laughs> It's no surprise, really, but you know, <laughs> that's really cool. I can't unhear it, but it was really. <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't freak out. I'm being deliberately facetious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm being deliberately facetious. Those um those harmony sounds you hear them, most obviously you hear them in a fair bit of heavy rock music, don't yeah. you? Guitar yeah, yeah. solos and stuff. Yeah. Um, how will you? What's your plan for using that? Oh, just. I don't know yet. I just I just wanted to experiment. Simply with the it. best. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I just wanted to experiment with with the H9 because primarily yeah. that's what I'll be using it for. That and you know there's some some really out there stuff in there which sounds great, but the textures for me there's got to be a purpose behind them, right? Yeah. And even if it's just creating a mood or um you know, a specific part in the song. The, the, I mean, the H9 is, is a harmonizer. That's what they're really great at. So yep. 
And the fact that I can split that signal, send the harmonies to one amp and the dry signal to another. So, okay, let's experiment with that and just experiment with the expression pedal because the expression pedal is going into G3 and it's just doing it by a MIDI. So the expression pedal isn't plugged into the H9. Yeah, just in case um, that was in any way confusing, here is uh, the expression pedal that has been on the floor that Dan was using. So nice. So yeah. given that it's plugged into G3, yeah. presumably you can then assign it to do other things if you wanted. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you only got one expression pedal, but you could have it do a bunch of things. Yeah, have it do a bunch of things all together at the same time. But yeah, it's, it's um, this is where MIDI really comes into its own. You know, if, if, if what you're after is, you know, a, an immense amount of control, the reality is that, you know, it does so much stuff that I'll never use. But when I've got, when we've got a set list together, and yeah. there's a bunch of specific parts. Yeah, right. That I need to go bang. Yep. It's you know MIDI is wonderful for that. Yeah. Um, this I mean this bank is basically set up as a stereo wet dry just for, you know for experimentation. Um, and presumably a lot of that, the sounds will develop as you write the tunes and get with the band. Absolutely. And, and then and then things the, will change. And then you can save it, which is absolutely yeah. But you know, like I said, this is a starting point, and and you know things can change. I. Um, I'm already missing having the DNM drive on there because the DNM drive for me does an amazing heavy thing with the telecast. It just works so well. Yeah. Um, so I might be looking at ways to to get that on there. I, it's like the um, automaton does really. I mean, it sounds great, but the I find the heavier thing, especially with the quieter rig, it's it can get a bit fizzy. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. It sounds awesome. Yeah. But if the rig's cranked, it sounds amazing. But you know, the DNM drive, I can get that working at any volume. A little harder to dial in, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But for the for the you know the intermediate sounds and stuff and the fuzzes, it's it's really cool. So peasant um, aside, then. Yep. You've got all this mega tech up there. Yep. And a rubbishy old analog. So, I love analog modulation, and it is the only way. For, I've you know tried everything, and they're just Nothing sounds like the analog, you know, modulating stuff. So what I've got is I've got the Harmonious Monk, um, our uh, harmonic tremolo, and I've got the, the Thorpey Camouflage. Uh, yeah, I was just starting, my heart was starting to beat a little faster there when I thought, hang on, he's got no chorus or flanger on here, but he has underneath. He has indeed. Uh, so let's... Um, okay, so just again, the, the peasant. So I've got the harmonious monk going to one amp. And I've got the Thorpe going to the other.
Expensive sounds, expensive chords. Yeah. It's so, just, I mean, it's for days, isn't it? It's, it's, it's for days. Yeah, yeah, it's unreal. Like, if I do a, like a, you know, a heavier thing. That's all. I just so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> what have we missed then? What have we missed? We've done everything up top. Yep. Uh, no, I think that's it. We've got everything. We've got everything. Yep. Wow. 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 It's. I mean, forgive the indulgence, right? Um, it's not very often we do our own pedal boards, but people are really interested in it and they want to know what you've chosen. Totally. So surprising emissions for me. Chorus. Sure. No C1 mm -hmm. type sound on there. Um, and I think a very kind of, um, what, like a hybrid approach to your, your gain tones, because pedal boards in the past, Dan's got like eight overdrives on there. Yeah. I mean, there's still one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think because um, the the automaton frees up a lot of that stuff because it's so flexible. And I think what I love most about it is the EQ. Yeah. Because if I, if I've you know if I've got you, the, a gain sound, which is punching the automaton with a control booster and and a compressor, you know I don't have to rely solely on the automaton for its gain characteristics, but yeah, the yeah, EQ yeah. makes it so powerful. And there's so much headroom in it that, you know, it's just, you know. Yeah, that's the, that's been the key question with the automaton. We have done a whole show on the automaton. It's cropped up in a few TPS episodes. And the sort of start point is, you know, because it's so versatile, because it's MIDI controlled and because it does so many things, you can use it to replace everything. But of course, what you can't do is stack it. Yeah. Because it's just it. Yep. So having, in your case, King of Tone and the, the Dirty Mac especially, yeah, yeah. Um, around it is where you start to create those textures. Yep. And there is still something, you know, um, subject for a whole other discussion and many other discussions that we've had before, the texture of many lower gain stages stacked mm. is so different than, you know, one lots of gain pedal, isn't it? Absolutely. There's something in the harmonics. Yeah, we, we'd look at, we'll look further into that because it's such an interesting yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Killer. So there you go. That's what that's what I'll be starting out with, and we'll get um, you know now that things are starting to open up more, we're we're going to get together and and make some noise and just see how we go. Yes, and uh, order two knob guards from um, yes. Chase Bliss. Yeah, they're very cool. Uh, they've done a. It's not exactly high tech. <laughs> they've done a. Simon's making knob jokes in the background. <laughs> they're doing a, uh, a like a perspex thing that stops me spilling booze down my own automaton. Indeed. Let alone the crazy person in the front row dancing to a song that I'm not even playing. <laughs> I do hope all those people have been okay throughout COVID, you know? Because what do they do if they're not dancing at the front oh. to a song you're not playing? That is the best question anyone's asked since during COVID. No answers, any better questions, man. Yeah. That's what that pedal show is yeah, all about. Yeah, man. I, Wow. Yeah. They've all started YouTube channels. Yeah. Just making <laughs> fools of themselves. Not fools. Beautiful humans. Beautiful, yeah. Just expressing themselves. Beautiful They're, humans yeah, in yeah. the moment. Expressing yeah. through the, the, yeah. the majesty just, of, of drunken dance. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Please. That, that, not 18 milliliters of warm white wine you've got left. Please, 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 <laughs> please 
Get it down your throat. You've paid for it. No need to throw it on my pedal no, board, no, right? No. Just no need for that. Come on. Or there's no need to rest your handbag on my apps. No, no need for that either. Yep. When you crash into the mic stand and it hits my teeth, that no need for that no, either. No. Yep. That's um, if you could stop doing that, that would be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Have you ever come back from a break in a set and your amp is just covered in glasses? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Usually yeah. mine, to be fair. Fair, fair, fair. fair. <laughs> There um, we go. We should jam a bit. I think yeah, let's do that. Sounds up. Um, just for, for the record, I've just got a simple amp set up down there on the end of some delay and reverb and a bit of overdrive just to provide some texture for Dan to um, do his thing. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yes, we'll do it. Thank you so much for watching um, and, and indulging us, indulging me specifically. Thank you for indulging me, Mick. Oh, mate, I've enjoyed I, I love it. I love it. Uh, Massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can buy most of this stuff. Indeed. And our dear friends in Australia. Uh, likewise, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Please check them out. Uh, lovely bunch of people, Matt and the gang down there. Uh, Indeed. Well, I shouldn't say down there. It's not strictly down there, is it? Because the thing goes around and around. In Australia. Yeah, you can say down there. Well, it's... Yeah, I don't know. It feels a bit sort of hemispherically um, elitist. Fair enough. To have okay. up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and we have links in the description below. <laughs> yeah, so we would say go over there then to... Um, over there. Uh, Sweetwater in the US. If you click the links, you click on the Sweetwater uh, links and buy stuff. Um, yeah, we just, you know, they send us gold bars. They do. Yeah. Uh, I normally come up with a really long tangent, but quite it's frankly, been a long couple there, of days. there isn't one today. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we get kicked back off that if you buy something from Sweetwater from using one of our links. Yes. For which we are very grateful. Thank you. Also, a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed t-shirts and pedals and strings and hats and all the stuff. Everything that we sell, that's the primary way we fund this show. Uh, and it keeps the lights on. And finally, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Um, thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, it means the world. Really appreciate it. It does. Right. Let's rock. Let's rock. <laughs>